Today we need to talk about how Nintendo might be teasing the next great remake for the Zelda series. Now, we've already had a couple of videos go up over the last, you know, week or so here talking about the potential of Zelda remakes, right? We had the Dr. Sirkin Toto ZR 2023 uh, tease that he did, and then, you know, you can take that uh, and sort of infer some things from that, that he's talking about a Zelda remake or a potential Zelda remaster being revealed this year. This is just because of a tweet he made back in 2021, referencing what Nintendo was about to announce as the release timing for Breath of the Wild 2. But I, I don't really want to dive too deep into that because we already went over it, but it's just a piece of evidence to bring up on why this has been coming up lately. But then there's also this kind of out there rumor by Zippo, and again... <laughs> Uh, we, we talked about this already where he talked about Ocarina of Time and I don't really want to dive too deep into that because again, I already made a video on that if you want to go watch it. But it is something to note that Nintendo themselves might have already hinted at the next great Zelda remake. And there's a reason that we should believe this Zelda remake is coming. Now, I'm not saying it's coming this year. Heck, I'm not even going to say it's coming next year but it's going to be coming a lot sooner than you think, and we'll know about it fairly soon as well. Now, before I get into this, I just want to remind you that, hey, if you're enjoying the video, I'd appreciate if you would drop a like, subscribe to the channel, and maybe hit that bell icon to be notified of all future uploads. Now, we need to dive a bit further into this because our dear friend Andres Restart has actually been all over the Zelda remake train. He's been covering a lot of stuff about this for a long time, including some things that I overlooked. One of those, uh, in a video he posted yesterday where he recapped a whole bunch of stuff, and I really encourage you go watch his video because if you can't tell after watching his video, might be a little inspiration for this one, is that there was a trademark for Ocarina of Time filed all the way back in 2020. Now, normally, I wouldn't actually think a trademark being filed is that noteworthy you know trademarks are renewed literally all the time by nintendo and it doesn't always mean a game's coming out could have just been the nso release of ocarina of time right didn't necessarily have to be anything that matters but it's notable because this wasn't a trademark renewal it was actually a brand new trademark for ocarina of time now we don't know what this trademark applies to and this was back in 2020 and we haven't seen anything necessarily happen with this trademark yet, but it's notable because the original Ocarina of Time trademark is still active, but so is this one. So what is this one for? I don't know, but if you can't tell, we're going to be getting to the idea of this Ocarina of Time remake here in a moment. Now, if that's really all I had to talk about today was just something I missed from back in 2020, look, it's noteworthy, but it's kind of old news, and we've already talked about the Zelda remake happening, as I mentioned, in two prior videos over the last week. But there's actually more reasons beyond those rumors and the trademark to talk about Ocarina of Time in particular being the game getting a remake or possibly a re master and it's happening sooner than later so andres restart in his excellent video yesterday and again i can't implore you enough go watch it because he's going to bring up some stuff in there that i don't even mention you know, specifically with tears of the kingdom and some connections there again he's a great zelda theorizer so you really should pay attention to what he says if that's the content you're into but he mentioned a peculiar thing nintendo has done with zelda so when they close a generation with a new zelda game especially lately, a new remake slash remaster enters very early on the next system's radar. Spirit Tracks was one of the final big games on the Nintendo DS before 3DS came out, and in the first year of 3DS, they launched Ocarina of Time 3D. The Nintendo Wii, one of its last major releases, was Skyward Sword, and in the first year of Wii U, we got the Wind Waker HD. Now, we didn't see this repeat with Switch, but we all know that Breath of the Wild became a cross-generation title, foregoing the need for a super early Zelda remaster or remake. So, now that Tears of the Kingdom happened at the end of Switch, the first year of Switch 2 has what exactly? Again, I wasn't really even paying attention to this. 
So go ahead and check out Andres Research's video. He brings up a lot of good points. Now, something we brought up briefly in our video with uh, in our video talking about the Zippo rumor, and because it's tied to a Zippo rumor, I think it's really easy to ignore this. I wanted to separate this out anyways, was an interview that Fujibayashi and Aonuma did with Nintendo Dream. Now, in the interview with Nintendo Dream, they were asked about Rawl, who, <laughs> it's an interesting uh, translation thing. Rawl means Raru. Uh, they, you know, didn't, they, it doesn't translate properly in English. It's almost like they renamed him in English. Uh, but anyways, moving on, they, they asked how familiar that name was, and, you know, they, they were just kind of curious, like, why, you know, why is this person called Raru in Tears of the Kingdom? And Fujibayashi said his name comes from his role. For the Zelda series, Raru is in the position of being a guiding figure. In this work, as Princess Zelda's further growth is depicted, she is guided by the king and queen of the country's founding era in the past world. When we wondered what kind of person would be suitable for such a role, we decided to select someone by the name of Raru. Then Aonuma chimes in, and here's some interesting words, and... We're going to get to why we need to pay attention to what Alnuma says very carefully. When I first heard that he would be called Raru, I thought it was a very natural progression. But I wondered how many of the people currently playing Tears of the Kingdom actually know about the character Raru. And then he laughs. Now, Raru first appeared as the name of a town slash village in Zelda 2 The Adventure of Link. But it's no he noted specifically about the character Raru. And as a character, not a town, he first appeared in Ocarina of Time. He is suggesting many people playing Tears of the Kingdom today may not know who Raru actually is anymore. Now, this could be a throwaway comment and could likely mean nothing. But Alnuma has a history, especially one lately, of teasing future game releases with remasters and remakes. He did so with Skyward Sword back in 2018 when at a Zelda concert, he, uh, this was a Zelda concert in Osaka in Japan, by the way, he went on stage to say, I know what you're thinking, Skyward Sword on Switch, right? Keep in mind, Skyward Sword was not announced for Nintendo Switch and did not come out for till years later. But in researching this video, I found out that's not even the first time Aonuma did this sort of teasing. He actually teased Link's Awakening remake for Switch back in 2016 before Nintendo Switch was even announced. In an interview with Edge Magazine back in 2016, he said the following, Actually, Nintendo has been telling me to create a new IP, but then they're also telling me to make more Zelda games. I can't really share much. I'm not sure I'm allowed to say anything, but I really like the idea of a game where you can live as a thief. That's all I'll say. Well, we all know the Link's Awakening remake did come out on Switch, but you might not understand this reference. So let me explain why this is a reference to Link's Awakening. If you aren't aware, in Link's Awakening, you can optionally steal goods from the town tool shop. You can walk out with any item if you distract the owner and just go right out the front door. However, if you do that, Link will be called a thief by everyone in the game going on forward. In other words, he teased twice new remakes and remasters, one in a more direct way, you know, Skyward Sword for Switch, right? Another in a very, very subtle hint. Now he's questioning if people even remember who Raru is anymore. In other words, when Alnuma is making references to past games, it's not necessarily something we should just dismiss outright. He has a history of of teasing future Zelda remakes and remasters. And obviously, if you go back to those comments in 2016, what's one of the things that he said Nintendo told them? He needs to make more Zelda games. And they're not talking about the one big game that comes out every five years. Nintendo wants to have Zelda games coming out more often. And to fill the gap is obviously to do so with, you know, remakes and remasters. And the interesting thing is every single 3D, you know, Zelda game, the ones that sell the most, have already had like remakes or remaster type releases, right? The HDs, the Wind Waker, Twilight Princess, uh, and obviously Ocarina of Time 3D, Majora's Mask 3D, so Skyward Sword HD. He's already sort of ran the gambit of bringing those games back, and it's entirely possible we could be getting a 
Grezzo remake, right? Grezzo's probably working something. They're the ones that did Link's Awakening. They could maybe be doing another top-down Zelda remake. But the interesting part is here is that Alnuma specifically brings up Raru as a character. Again, this sounds dumb because he didn't mention Ocarina of Time specifically, but he mentions the character Raru and how people might not know who he is. Again, a subtle hint. Hey, you know, I really like the idea of a game with a thief. Again, subtle hint. He has a history of dropping subtle hints. And when it comes to trying to drive a player base to a new platform like Nintendo Switch 2, in general, you want to do so with a bang. And while it's, sure, entirely possible we're going to get Tears of the Kingdom and Breath of the Wild 4K ports. I mean, you know, reports have it that Nintendo had a Breath of the Wild 4K demo behind the scenes. Is that really going to drive people to a new platform who already have the game and already put thousands of hours in on Switch, especially if there's backwards compatibility? I'm not so sure that, well, I, they'll probably sell well. I, I don't think that they're a selling point to buy a new system for many Zelda fans. Then you also have the Zelda fans out there that obviously maybe aren't as into the style of Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom. And you have to convince some of them as well. So what better way to do that than take one of the greatest games ever made and bring it back with a remake slash remaster. And I, I think that this is something that not only El Numa is hinting at here and we have the rumors out there, I think it is something that should happen and is highly likely to happen even if it's not announced this year, even if it's not announced next year, it could be a first year of Switch 2 title. Imagine that when they unveil Switch 2, this game is teased in that reveal trailer. Can you imagine the hype that will be going on? And here's the thing. I know that Alnuma in particular does pay attention to what's going on around him, and he must be well aware of the Final Fantasy VII remake. And whether he's played it or not, I don't know, but he has to be aware of how popular and how well received it is as that's a game that came out back during the same era as Ocarina of Time and is also viewed as one of the greatest games of all time. It just feels like things are lining up where now is the right time to bring it back with its first HD edition, its first from the ground full-on remake and we can go on and on over how they might do it. You know, could they do the Wii U tech demo style which was more like Twilight Princess, but then people feel like Twilight Princess was a natural progression of the art direction in Ocarina of Time. Do they lean more heavily into the way Ocarina of Time 3D did it? Go a bit more cartoony with things? Do they try an all-new art style? Do they go in the direction of Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom and remake Ocarina of Time in that style? Maybe even using a similar engine, obviously with some cutback features like, hey, you can't climb everything, right? Because we couldn't do that in Ocarina of Time. I don't know. But it is interesting that one of the widely considered greatest games of all time is something that could be happening really soon. And I think there is at least some semi-realistic reasons to think it will. I personally am on record of saying like Ocarina of Time doesn't make my top 10 Zelda games, but it doesn't mean it doesn't make my top 10 most important games in my life. Ocarina of Time is quite literally why I'm a content creator to this very day. That game drove me and inspired me to start making fan websites and all the work I did there over decades and, and helping with wikis ultimately led to me having this YouTube career that we have today. Uh, making this video I'm making for you right now. So look, people always get mad at me when I mention it's not a top 10 Zelda game for me. I just love the Zelda series that much. I, I've seen you know, so many games do things better, but it's an important game. And it could be an important launch game or first year game anyways for Switch 2 and help really grab that Zelda fan base, the most hardcore of it especially, to hop onto the Switch 2 hype train right away long before they can tease what the next major new Zelda game is. Because again, we're probably three years away maybe from being teased on the next big Zelda game. Anyways, guys, let me know what you think about this down in the comments below and I will catch you guys in the next video.